Hi, I'm Sean Hessinger, and this is Small Biz in 15, the show where we bring you small business success in 15 minutes or less. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the show. So how can your local chamber of commerce help your small business? Well, according to Deb Brown, co-founder of Save Your Town and a former chamber executive herself, you're probably asking the wrong question. Instead, look for ways you can help your chamber help you. Well, Deb, let's start by asking the question, why should a small business join a chamber of commerce in the first place? You know, the obvious answers are pretty simple. The chamber promotes your business. They host community events. They help grow the local economy, hopefully. They market outside the county and they advocate for your business. That alone is reason enough to join a chamber. But I want to um, tell businesses to think a little bit more about it than that. Because if you're just joining to have your name on a list somewhere, why bother? Um, do you want to work with your chamber? Um, can they provide referrals to you? And in order for them to do that, you have to tell them how to refer your business. So that it, that means some things like, oh, what gets you excited to get up in the morning and go to work? Answer that question. Where do you see your company in five years? What do you like most about the town you're in? Talk about your employees. What kind of products do you, you make now or sell? And what kind would you like to make or sell? And is there something missing in your business that the chamber could help you with? And then they'll be able to give you the perfect referral to your business. I think start there. Um, you just kind of mentioned a bunch of things when we started about benefits. Um, but if we were to encapsulate the, the kind of services that the chamber provides, uh, uh, maybe other or more specific than what you mentioned, what might some of them be? Well, that's a good question. You know, there's an old saying, if you've seen one chamber, you've seen one chamber. <laughs> Traditionally, um, they're going to provide some marketing assistance, uh, host some events to bring more people downtown in front of your business and some chambers lobby, which means if their designation is a 501c6, and that's the structure for most chambers, that just simply allows them to lobby for you and your business. And not every chamber lobbies though with your government officials. And if yours does, I always recommend do your research and see if they're asking for the kind of things that matter to you be a little more actively involved in what it is they're lobbying for. And that brings uh, to mind another question, which is uh, when you're looking to join a chamber, uh, what kinds of qualities should you be looking for when you're deciding whether to join, whether you're deciding whether this is a good idea or not? What, you know, what questions should you ask uh, about, about what they're doing and, and, and how they're doing it? Well, here's the thing. What kind of person are you? Are you the kind of person that once you join a chamber, that you're going to be active and that you're going to be helpful and that you're going to give referrals? These are all, it's a two-way street. It's not a one-way street. You want to build a relationship between the chamber and the business where it creates the opportunity and the recognition, sales, excitement that both parties need to work together and be successful. So in other words, look at your chamber and say, is there a place for me here? Can I volunteer? How can I get involved? How can I make a difference? It'll make your chamber stronger and it'll strengthen your business as well. You, you want to, you know, there's simple a simple answer to that question. You want to make sure your chamber's involved in your community. That's the biggest thing, that they're active, they're respected, um, and that they represent the businesses fairly. But you want to go further than that. You want to see where you fit into the chamber. You know, I think I know the answer to this question already, because uh, from years of, of covering uh, God knows how many chamber meetings uh, when I was in local newspapers. But can you and should you join more than one chamber? Can you, first of all, if they're small town chambers? I have yet to meet a small town that would not let a person join their chamber. 
<laughs> um, so the answer is yes, of course you can. And particularly if you work regionally or if you're in more than one area, you might want to join more than one chamber. But again, step back and take a look. Maybe it would be more effective if you joined the state chamber than a local chamber. And wherever you live, get involved in where you live, of course. But if you're working outside of that area, take a look at those chambers as well. Are there other organizations, other business organizations that you might want to join if there isn't an option to join a local chamber? Yeah, absolutely. I think every retail um, a group of retailers in a community should have some sort of downtown retail association if they don't already have one within the chamber. And uh, service organizations can do the same kind of thing. So why would you want to do that, right? Well, first of all, you want to share ideas and you, and you want to ask questions and you want to learn better how to support each other. But you also want to be able to stretch your marketing dollars. So how can you partner together with other retail tailors and re promote your region better, promote your town better, and promote your group of stores. That's why you wanna be involved in some sort of downtown retail association. And you know me, <laughs> I'm not the person that tells you to form committees and sign up and assign officers and everybody has to do certain things every month, forget all of that. Just get together, just get together. Have a conversation. Start talking about the things that matter. Should you do it every month? I don't know. Does your town require that you do it every month? You might do it every three weeks. You might do it every six weeks. But figure out how to go have coffee or even a beer and talk about the things that matter to you and your other businesses that are similar. Yeah, let me ask you, uh, I, I, and I don't know how to word this exactly, but are there reasons why you might choose not to join a local chamber of commerce? I used to think there were reasons why you shouldn't join your local chamber, but now I'm not so sure. Um, I'm a former chamber director, executive director. Today, my business has me helping other small towns take practical steps towards a brighter future. So what can my local chamber do for me? I don't even work in my town. Well, first of all, I get referrals from other business owners. It also provides me an opportunity to serve my community. And I believe we should all volunteer in some kind of way and make our community stronger. It also gives me the opportunity to meet new people in a more structured environment. Instead of, you know, running around town trying to find who the newcomers are, wouldn't it be great if I could just go to the newcomer breakfast? so that the chamber has already done the work for me and then they've done the initial legwork, then I can take it from there. So yes, I think you should join your chamber, whether it fits with your business model or not. Okay, so here's another question um, and maybe a big question. Say there is no chamber or no association. You, there's a small town, you just started a business, you just moved to the town and plan to start a business. Can you start a chamber? And, and, and if so, how do you go about that? Well, first of all, don't. Don't start there. That's a huge step. And you don't even know if it's going to work, right? You want to start smaller. Begin to partner with other businesses like yours. Look down the street. Are you a retailer? Are there three other businesses you can get together and have a visit, drink a beer, talk about maybe some informal things. Hey, there's a big event coming up next month. How can we work together to get some of those people into our, our stores? Or there's no events. Let's create a shopping event. So start creating some things on your own, first of all. Don't walk in assuming that, well, we're going to start a chamber of commerce and it's going to be fun, easy, and profitable. When you don't have a clue if it's gonna work. And secondly, why isn't there one there already? Maybe somebody's already tried it and it didn't work. Well, Deb, I, I, I'm, I'm in a small town. I live in a small town or I've moved to a small town. I've started a business and there is a local chamber and I've decided I wanna join it. What, what are the steps? I mean, I realize you just join by, you, you know, you, you, you sign up to join, but I mean, what are the steps, you know, joining and becoming involved? What, what, what kinds of things might I want to do? 
So first of all, see if they have a website and go explore the website and see who the other members are. Um, see what kind of promotional things they're doing. Do they have a Facebook page? Are they on Twitter? Do they advertise in any degree in, in the local paper and radio station? Do your research first, then make a phone call to either the um, development person or even the director. It's a small town, so you probably know the director or you should know the director anyway. And see what they have to say to you. Go have a visit. I'm a huge proponent of visiting and don't make your mind up right away, you know, because they're going to tell you the pretty standard reasons why you should join the chamber. But you also want to find out how you can help the chamber as well. How can this be a partnership that works for both of you? And then you'll decide, you'll decide, do I want to invest? Maybe it's $150 a year to join the chamber. And with that investment, what is my return on that investment? What do I get for that? Um, and don't always think tangible things. Take a look at those intangibles as well. Um, maybe your chamber doesn't do a lot of advertising, but they might bring a lot of different people together to create networking opportunities that could be more important to you. And then give them your well, money. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was just thinking, uh, you've returned to this theme again and again. It, it sounds to me like joining a chamber it is not just about what the chamber can do for you, but what you can do uh, to make the chamber more useful for you and other businesses. Is that a fair assessment? It is a fair assessment. And I want you to think about the word chamber. The chamber are not the two or three individuals that work in that chamber. The chamber is all the businesses that belong to it. So if, if you're looking at it in that context, it makes more sense to be more active and more involved. So, Deb, uh, what are some of the things that a chamber can do uh, to communicate uh, the value that it provides to the small business community? That's a great question, because there's some things they can do that aren't going to cost them a, a ton of money. It could be as simple as uh, doing a radio show appearance and talk about business development in your community, uh, provide advertising and sponsorship room in the chamber brochures that they put out, um, create a business spotlight in your local newspaper. You know, newspapers are looking for content, help give them content. And not only write it for the newspaper, but use that content in other places as well. Um, and on your year in review, write that all out and share it in, in not only with the members, but with the prospects too. Um, do you do membership breakfast? Do you do newcomers meetings where, I love this, I stole this idea from Bennettsville, South Carolina. Um, they host uh, a couple of times a year. They invite all the new people in town to come for an evening and have some snacks and just get together and talk. And the way that they guarantee attendance is their local realtors who sold in the house or rented it to them personally invite them. And it, it's a great show. If somebody from the county shows up, um, if they have a speaker in town like I was, um, they show up, somebody from the city, and you get to learn, like, where can I burn my garbage? Or how do I join the chamber? Or what opportunities are there to volunteer at? Tell me more about that empty building. All those kind of questions can get answered in one location. And it's it's an awesome way to bring new people together. Um you know, a weekly newsletter, um, chamber chats. How can you bring people together? What are you doing for your retired chamber members? You know, we call them our chamber champions and we host a coffee once a month for those folks. Um, we ask our members to volunteer at events. Now I'm not saying volunteer to serve on a committee because nobody has time anymore <laughs> to serve on committees. But it's so much easier to say, hey, we need some help for two hours doing this one thing. Can you show up that Friday evening? And you're more than likely to get a yes. And now it's time for our small biz tip in 15 seconds or less. Ask not what your chamber can do for you, but what you can do for your chamber. Helping your local chamber of commerce helps your small business and your community. Thanks again to Deb Brown. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's show. 
please leave a comment and let us know what kind of topics you'd like to see discussed on future episodes. For more small business news and tips, join us at smallbiztrends.com.